subscribe to our YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get the latest updates. When something memorable happens to us, such as discovering something new or having an accident or even observing an accident occur, our brain remembers these events like a video clip with all the surrounding context and environmental imagery and the right sequence of events. When we then try to recall the experience again and remember it and narrate it to someone, our brain recalls it in the correct sequence. This is known as episodic memory. Today's video is about findings which identify the exact cells in our brain that are responsible for making this kind of episodic memory and encoding and recall possible according to new research in the Proceedings of National Academy of Sciences or PNAS. My name is Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. Time Cells this is the name that scientists have given to these group of cells that help store and recall episodic memories sequentially. These essentially store information with something that is akin to timestamps in the right sequence so that we can recall these events in the right order. Time cells in the brain act as an index which can be referenced across time and then recall memories in the order in which the events in those memories occurred. The region of brain where this processing takes place is the hippocampus. We've known for a long time that the hippocampus is the center for navigation and memories in our brain. We've already known that it contains a group of cells called place cells which fire when a person or animal is at a specific location. Place cells were first detected and confirmed in rodents several years ago. When rats are in a spatially structured environment, a space that's built for them, we can see these cells firing when we observe their hippocampus. And we know that humans have these place cells too. Similarly, scientists were also able to first confirm the presence of time cells in rodents. In 2011, for example, scientists performed an experiment on rats where they trained rats to perform a two-step task with an inbuilt delay between them. The brains of these rats were monitored in the experiment with surgically implanted electrodes that recorded neural activity in the hippocampus. The rats were first taught to associate an object with a smell. There were pairs of object and smells and when they dug for the correct smell, they received food as reward. After this pair association was done where each object corresponded to a certain smell, the rats were introduced to one of those objects and then they were asked to enter into an enclosed area. In this enclosed space, they were kept for 10 seconds. This was the inbuilt delay in the experiment and then the rats were released into an area that contained a flower pot that was scented. If the smell in the flower pot corresponded to the object they had, the rats started to dig for food. If the smell did not correspond to the object that they first saw before entering the enclosed space, they did not dig. Through the course of this experiment, the researchers identified cells that were firing. When the rats were training to associate a smell with an object, there were some 300 neurons that were firing in the hippocampus. When the rats then entered the enclosed space for 10 seconds, the scientists noticed that about one third of the neurons still kept firing even though nothing was happening. The researchers concluded that during that time period, the hippocampus was actually encoding the passing of time. If the delay in this enclosed space was beyond 10 seconds, where sometimes experimenters did extend the time period, they noticed that some of the neurons continued to fire for beyond 10 seconds, but new neurons started firing as well, as if their brains were recalibrating and marking the additional passage of time. This is also similar to how place cells were demonstrated to work. Now, this experiment was conducted on rats. Now, the new experiment of time cells was performed with humans. It was performed on 27 people by researchers at the New York University. In the experiment, patients were waiting for surgery for severe epilepsy and had already had electrodes implanted in their brain as a part of their pre-surgical procedures. The patients were first asked to study around 12 to 15 words that appeared in a sequence on a laptop for about 30 seconds. 
Then they had a short break after which they were asked to recall the words. Meanwhile, there were electrodes in their brain and their hippocampal activity was being measured. The scientists found that a small number of cells would fire at very specific times during each word sequence and the scientists think that these cells were acting as timestamps for people to remember when these words occurred in the sequence. All of this activity was observed among neurons firing in the hippocampus. The authors offer further support for their theory that these particular group of cells are time cells and these are the ones that are responsible for our understanding of sequential order of events in memories. They refer to past experiments on memory that were conducted on people with damage to their hippocampus. In one 2016 experiment, for example, scientists had asked a number of people both with and without hippocampal damage to the brain to take a tour of University of California, the San Diego campus. They then asked people to later recall the things that happened on the tour sequentially. And they found that people with no brain damage were able to recall memories in the correct order while those who suffered from hippocampal lesions or any other kind of damage did have memories but not in the right order. The researchers state that this could be because their brains did not have time cells. They state that time cells are the ones that encode and timestamp and record events as they happen in relation to the events like a linked list. Each node in this list, each memory has the value but is missing the link to the next node so the sequence is lost. But the researchers told NPR, the story will be linked in the description below, that just because we have time cells, it doesn't mean that our brain processes time mechanically like a ticking clock does. Recording each passing second independent of everything else that happens around us like a clock does, that is not what happens in the brain. Time cells distort time perception depending on how we are processing information around us. When we're having a really happy day, time speeds up. And when we're waiting for this year of 2020 to get over, it feels like time is moving very, very, very slow.